Turn them welcome. Welcome. <laughs> um, Coffee Talk, episode seven, right? Yay. Know. It's She put it on the top of the script. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, I got it right this time? Yes. I definitely swapped the last one. <laughs> Didn't notice. <laughs> All right. So today we are joined by Melissa Ann Strickland, who is an academic advisor um, in Recreational Parks and Tourism Department. Recreation Park and Tourism Sciences is one of the two departments. Okay. All right. Yeah. There's two. Wow. She advises I learned something new students. Today. Yes. Yeah, you missed that. Um, <laughs> Did I cut it out? Maybe. I could have swore I cut and pasted, but whatever. I mean, She's, it's, you know. Okay, she advises on. students in several <laughs> academic areas, such as agricultural economics, mm-hmm. agribusiness, hospitality and tourism, youth development, and community recreation. For almost 10 years, Mm -hmm. Melissa Ann has been meeting students where they are and creating a safe space, brave space, whether virtual or in person. A recipient of the November 2020 Advisor of the Month and the 2021 Innovating Advising Award, (laughs) Melissa Ann enjoys creating new and engaging ways to interact with her students. Welcome. Welcome. Accurate. Thank you very much for having me. That's a lot. It is a lot. That's, yes. And I so, even condensed that. So the that full the bio will version. actually yes. be on. We, um, yeah. I work in the academic dean's office in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. And so within the College of Ag, we have centralized advising. Um, and so my advising center includes three departments. And so I advise students in two of them. So there's there's a lot. That is a but lot. But we love our students. Lot. We have about 350 um, students per advisor plus um, the certificate programs, the professional event management, which is why I'm here, and Yay. then the hospitality management certificate. Did you say 300 students per advisor? 350, yes. yes. Holy mackerel. We're very efficient. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> Never mind. We'll, <laughs> we'll lost. Sorry. <laughs> she can, she handles five students and maybe not more. Could you do more? 350, you think you could handle that? Completely. Advising them on their their life goals and Listen, dreams. I tell our <laughs> students, I tell our students, like, if you need academic advice, you need to go to Jamie. Yeah. Mm. Because I am the person yes. that I will encourage you and I will help guide you, but your parents will call me and they will hate me. There are parent <laughs> calls, but we, we, we deal with them effectively yeah. and as much as in support of as we can. I mean, yeah. especially now, past COVID, there's a lot of... Um, a lot more concerns than we used to have, sure. um, mental health or otherwise, and so parents are more involved than they used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Me, the ones like, did you tell my student they can, like, go and live in a van and travel the, like, the country? Down by the river. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe? Yeah, that's definitely you, yeah. Maybe? Yeah. It's good life experience. <laughs> <laughs> we do encourage our students to get out of Texas and get some life experience. Yeah. It's I did. Mm-hmm. Mike's husband's mom lived by the river. <laughs> Just think of Chris Farley. <laughs> We're going to go down that road. This is nah. a little early in the week to so go down that <laughs> road. We'll gloss that. Okay. So tell us, you told us a little bit about your role. Tell us a little bit more about your role. So my role, um, I have several hats, I suppose. So first and foremost is academic advisor. So um, I do advise undergraduate students mostly. And that would be in the RPTS degree, agribusiness degree, and agricultural economics degree. Um, and then also we have minors and certificates who are open to students that are not in our departments, as well as um, some graduate students and some non-degree seeking students pursuing the professional event management certificate. So that hat is mostly what I what I um, do most of the time. But in, in addition to that, you know, I run our social media for our um, advising center, um, and I help where I can with departmental events and things like that, which I'm sure we'll cover later. And then I am the program advisor, so I do the logistics for the professional event management certificate and the hospitality management certificate. So anything paperwork-wise, clearing students' graduations, anything like that. Do you have any free time? I was going to say, I sound, I'm exhausted <laughs> just listening to free that. Time. Like, <laughs> I am absolutely a work-life balance freak. So nice. it is a you know eight to five situation. I don't yeah. answer emails after um, after five. That makes eight to five. That makes sense. Huh? And then on the weekends, I am all about not working yeah. um, and, until until I do, which I try not to. <laughs> Can you come teach us a class about that? You know, I'm. We're all learning. <laughs> you know, our new, our different ways of everybody defines it differently. Yeah. 
So for me, it's definitely being a couch potato on the weekends or going to Disney as much as possible. Nice. nice. How many times have you been? Well, really, I've only been about three or f- three times. I mean, but... that's more than me. I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, we went there for the, uh, my husband and I go, we try to go every five years because that's where our honeymoon was. Aww. And we're children. <laughs> it's fantastic. As you can see, I have a Disney obsession. Yes. It's turning into a sleeve. And um, so we went oh, for the... No, it's fine. I, I was just for later, thinking... I was like, is somebody in town doing your work? No, I have a fantastic tattoo artist in Houston. She okay. is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went to Disney World for the 50th anniversary. Oh, so wow, we were really? So excited to do that. Yeah. I always wanted to go for Halloween because they do like the goth Yes, tour. Yeah, so I mean, it's we got a piece of that. Um, not as much as I would have liked, but considering they were trying to smush Halloween and the 50th anniversary together because it was October 1st, yeah. it was the anniversary. Um, plus COVID, so they didn't have all of their mm-hmm. characters out, but they had some of the villains. They did like a parade of the villains, which I was freaking yes. out over. It was so much fun. That's awesome. Love it. Yeah. I need to go again. It's been since I was a child. But... Oh, it's so worth it again. Wait until some of the more COVID <laughs> things pass. It's nice because they have um, park capacities down. You do pay more, but the capacities are down, so your experience is phenomenal. Yeah. You almost walk on to every ride. That's and part of the reason I haven't been wanting to go in the last few years before COVID mm-hmm. is because it's just, it's so crowded. Right. I mean, so if you're okay with paying a little bit more, I mean, your experience is so much better. I mean, Disney knows how to do experiences. Well, yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tanner really, my husband really wants to go to the Harry Potter park. Oh, yes. He's we a haven't, huge Harry Potter fan. We haven't fan. been since they add, added to the second park. It used to be all at one park. Mm-hmm. And so you could just pay that ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and now they put the other half on the other, so you have to pay both tickets. And we haven't done that yet, but I've heard it's amazing. So basically, when y'all decide to go, this is who you need to call. Yeah, I know, right? The lowdown. <laughs> I'm like, she'll be our tour guide. That's right. She has all the experience to be our tour guide. Yeah. And pay for her ticket to go to? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I can make that sacrifice for you guys. <laughs> I'll sacrifice the vacation hours. Absolutely. You know, Interestingly, I would like to do it without the children. See, and we're, we're, we are um, purposefully child-free, and so we just go, the two of us, and, and enjoy ourselves without having to worry about having to stop and make sure our child has a nap. Just my man-child husband has a, has a nap for our game. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Or feed them. Yeah. Well, you know, that's fine. He yeah. has the chicken and waffles obsession, so we have like five a day, and he'll be fine. <laughs> nice. That sounds delicious. You know the Ziploc bag? Oh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Clearly, you've never been to the movies with me. Uh, no. <laughs> I have seen your giant purse, though, so I can only imagine. Yes. All of Wonderful the things. Wonderful things. <laughs> it's a snack bag. That's what it's for. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite part of advising? Oh, that's, there's so many parts. Advising is extremely rewarding. Um, as you can see, I have been doing it for 10 years, or almost 10 years. Next summer of 22 will be 10 years. Um, and I fell into it accidentally, but my passion was found very quickly. Um, I'd say that probably my most favorite most rewarding portion is just seeing students be successful in the way that they define it themselves so your success and your success would be different from my success and what we define it some of them it absolutely is graduating in in three or you know years four years with all these things and that's wonderful but some of them were just to make decisions on their own get out of bed go to class be healthy that's fine if that is what they need to be to do to be successful i will help them get there and, and to me, it's just getting them to understand that whoever they want to be, their authentic self, in their own success line, is what I'm there for. Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't be defined by what your parents want for you. Right. We do end up getting a number of students who end up coming in going, well, I thought I wanted to do this because of external pressures or just mm-hmm. what you know TV told me to say or this is where I thought the money lies. And then you find out that is not that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean happiness and success. So... It's Absolutely. cool to see them yeah. find out who they are and be okay with that. That's why I like our internship so much. I mean, granted, we only have, like, one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> if I could do 10 yes. at a time and balance all that, we could. But, yeah, that's what I like because, you know, you get to teach them about real-world experience, and right. then they get to decide whether they really like it or not. And if they don't like it, that's fine. Exactly. It's a safe space for students to realize, yeah. I either love this or I, or I don't like this. And I and I tell students all the time, it's just as important to find out what you don't like to do, mm-hmm. what you're not good at, as it is to know, I love this and I'm good at it. Because that just helps you scratch things off the list, and you can continue finding your path. Yeah. yeah. That's what um, Dr. J says from the YAP program, the Youth Advent- oh, Adventure yeah. program. Mm. He always says, as long as you know what you don't want to do, mm-hmm. 
that's better than knowing what you do. I don't want to do weddings. Yes, I, I found that out very I'm quickly. So I'm yeah. golden right now. <laughs> yeah. I would be okay with weddings. It, I would be okay. Yeah, only if they're in October. No. <laughs> yeah, I can't I mean, do it. any fall weddings, I guess. But you know, I will people say. People want to get married outside in the summer. I know, yeah. Texas summer outdoor <laughs> weddings. I'm like, they're gorgeous, but like, do you understand how much sweat is involved? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you have a room for your guests to change in? <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-mm. So just out of curiosity, how many students do you think, like, on average you guys get that do the um, event certificate? Right now we have a little over 100 currently in the program, um, and we get applications every week. It's a rolling basis, um, and so it's a pretty constant um, number of students who graduate with it each semester and and more find us. And we don't do that much advertising, actually. Um, We haven't done a dedicated marketing campaign for it, and and word of mouth for sure Mm -hmm. is a part of it. Um, and I think just seeing it around campus when they're doing events, you can kind of find out, you know, who's running it. And then you see that there's students behind it, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Um, but right now we have um, over 100. How many of them, percentage-wise, want to go into the wedding industry? I think they all start, I mean, a very large percentage of them yeah. <laughs> start out thinking that they want to go into the wedding industry. And, and so um, a part of the program is to go out and do required volunteer hours. And so a number of them do go, do go work at wedding venues um, or event companies in town that help you plan your wedding and some of them realize that they still love it and some of them realize like hmm there's a lot of personalities and emotions that go into this it's not just a typical event right yeah there's a lot of um a lot more factors to deal with with the wedding yeah, you have to be a really good people person you do and moderator you very much do. Moderators are a really good point because there's going to be some arguments and you have to be able to <laughs> smooth them over while keeping everyone happy. Yeah. Pass. Hard pass. Yes. I'm I mean, planning my own person. wedding. I'm not a people person. I mean, I'm not a people person. I'm a people person just <laughs> to a degree. Uh, yeah. Just, there's there's so a fine line that I won't cross. Yeah. You yeah, know. it would be very difficult to, to when you know there's just the wrong answer out of a bride's mouth and you're just like, it's going to be fine. Yes, it's going to be fine. <laughs> I mean, just think about it here. All the Some of the clients we deal with, it's like, this, okay, we can do that, but this would probably be better. And then they still do it. And, you know, it's like, it's they learn. But, you know, that's actually a wonderful learning point that our students do get with working with the real clients in town is realizing that you can be the professional with your experience and your knowledge and you can present to them, this is what should be done. Right. And then you learn that the clients are like, mm, but I don't want that. Yeah. Like you're you're the client, whatever yeah. you say. Yep, but I'm gonna is. still try to guide you in the smile and nod. Smile and nod. <laughs> as long as you're not breaking fire code, don't burn the building down. We're yes. happy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, the next question is going to be that: um, Have you translated your event management certificate into your career? But it sounds like you have. I have. Um. <laughs> more so before. Um. <laughs> Centralization occurred in the College of Ag um, just because I was dedicated to a specific department um, and so there was a little bit more involvement straight with the department and so I would help with um, planning events whether it was the admin who was planning and I was just helping her or um, I was in charge of the graduation reception that we would do every you know May, August, December every year <laughs> as well as any other little event that's going on. Um, but since, since the centralization of the college which is working out really well I'm now involved in multiple departments, and mm-hmm. so I can help, um, you know, guide as as I can. But because I'm no longer planning the specific events myself, yeah. I can then bring those tools into my advising office, yeah. which is what I do. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. I mean everything's an experience. Yeah, I mean you, whether it's it going to a wedding <laughs> or to a concert, <laughs> to you know a guest speaker, or you know walking into your advisor's office. It's still my job to provide them an experience that makes them happy and and moves them towards their success plan. Yeah. So do you have that, um, I don't know, I experience it a lot where you, like, go to an event and you have to, like, mentally point out all of the things that are wrong? Oh, my God, yes. And actually, it's such a... um, That's why we can't not... That's why we don't not work on the weekends. Yes, I, that's actually a huge thing that we have to teach students because they're like, but I don't think I can, you know, do this class because of the, um, you know, event requirements after hours or on the weekends, but I really want to do this industry after graduation. And we're like, okay, let's have a conversation. <laughs> You're not going to not work on holidays and weekends. That Absolutely. is your job. I mean, you get some tomorrow. Um, you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we got to teach that first. Um, and then I forgot the question. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you go to events, yes, do I, you? I, I pick them apart. Yeah. I very much pick them apart, usually in my head, but sometimes it overflows into conversation with my husband. And now he's so event just aware now since I've been in his life for 10 plus years that he now picks them apart even if I'm there or not <laughs> so it's pretty good we're like oop that should have been done that should have picked up they did not rehearse that you can't see anything over there wow that's a fire hazard <laughs> like yeah, that's my very biggest. much I cannot go to anything without going mm, no wow I could fix the world's problems <laughs> probably not but I feel like I could <laughs> with you and a chick-fil-a team Oh small. my gosh, yes, they know. They're so efficient. They are. I love Chick-fil-A. I did, I did oh have an experience recently where they I said thank you, and they did not say my pleasure. <gasps> I was How surprised. Dare they? I know. I was like, you must be new. Did you call their corporate line? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. So you guys also um, cannot attend an event without oh, picking yeah. it apart? Oh, we, we take pictures and like send them in a group chat. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. even better. So and yeah. Then it, yeah, and then it becomes like Monday morning conversations if it's on a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I don't see how you, how you can not turn it off. Turn it. I cannot turn it off. No, yeah, and I don't even work in it every day like you guys do. I, and I just. Mm-mm. It's funny because when she started, she came from catering, and so oh, mm-hmm. once she, she learned the facility side, side mm-hmm. now it's a little different. When she go, what was it like? The first thing you started talking to us about was that one wedding you went to where they added more. Oh God! Yes. <laughs> But that took several months of breaking her into the facility side before Mm -hmm. it registers, like, when they're after hours. Uh, Yeah. So now you pick up the – you pick apart the facility side. Do you pick apart the food and beverage side now? I do both. Yeah. All of it, yeah. I worked in catering also, so it's a – You already had that then? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my biggest biggest pet peeve. Linen. Linen. Linen is, yes. You mean when they don't steam out the lines in the Or it's not straight. It's not even that. Mm -hmm. I can overlook the lines because you're fixing to put a whole bunch of stuff on that table. Maybe you're not going to see it. True. But if you have one side that's on the ground and the other side (laughs) that's like two foot up and it's like. Hilo's not not in for table. Or like why is that an oval linen? Mm -hmm. Why is that not round? Yes. (laughs) You can't put two rectangles on And you can spot it from afar. (laughs) You can. And it's like, yes. you put that on there. How do you not see that? Did you not walk? You walk the table. I saw you walk the table because all the chairs have moved. <laughs> like, yes. It's super fun. Yeah. So that one wedding, what was it? It was like four or five months after you started. Yes. Um, it was yeah, good. it was it because it was in March. Yeah. When I started in October. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I don't, I don't even remember the name. Bright Star or something. Out, it's out in the country. Oh, okay. And uh, basically, you rent the facility, they unlock the doors, and then it's like a free-for-all. Wow. Uh, yes. That's interesting. A lot of venues are very, like, you must use my catering mm. and my, you know. Well, this is out in the country. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they Family owned, owned, I'm sure. Oh, they're new to the industry. Yeah. We'll no. see how. No. The owner of it, like, it was an they event just facility. They preferred that way. It was an event facility that this guy had bought, and then he owned all of the property next yeah. door, and they had, like, ag shacks and stuff mm. next door. Um. It was terrible because <laughs> more people started showing up because they put a sign on their business, the people that were getting married, that this is where they were getting married. So people just started showing up. Mm. Um, <laughs> so they started dropping tables and I'm talking like blocking X, ex- like straight up blocking exits, like piles of chairs everywhere. Oh, I mean, it was. They made barricades. Bad. It was bad. Wow. Like had there been a fire, so many people would have gotten hurt. Wow. Yes. Were you able to keep your mouth shut? No. Oh, okay. no. I was oh, like, no. that, I knew at the that people, point. <laughs> I knew the people and the family, and so, like, everybody that was, like, sitting at the table with that, I was like, that's a fire hazard. Why are they doing that? Like, right. I was I was very vocal about it. <laughs> Not only is that a huge emergency issue, but what were you thinking? Yeah. Can you tell me that thought process? Yeah, like, but also, like, these people are showing up to the wedding. You're not invited. Yeah. Why you would are you not ever? Invited. Food. Yeah. Free food. But wedding food is not always I mean, the best of foods. The family cooked it. I was going to say potluck too. probably, yeah. Yeah, the family cooked it. It was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you were able to eat, it was pretty good. <laughs> there were so many people, there was no they, food they left. They definitely <laughs> ran out. Um, but yeah, it was it was interesting. 
So let's segue off of that. Okay, because yes. I do want to know, I've never asked this question before. So when you guys do the actual program, is safety something that you guys teach them in the courses? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, it's we know that it's, we don't teach enough of it because we m- mostly have three main courses in event management in our current program. Um, so we have an introduction to um, planning and implementing events, and that is required of all of the students in recreation, park, and tourism. Um, it is an option for our minors and it's required of our event certificate. And then if the students wish to pursue events or tourism, then they have to go on to the second one, which is event management and operations one. And then there's a second event management operations two. Um, And so it does stair step. And so in the first course, um, what they're doing is they're coming up with a brand new event and they are going to plan it from start to finish on paper by themselves. So I used to teach that course. And then um, that's RPTS 311. In RPTS 320, they are getting into groups and they are working with uh, real clients and the clients are pitching what they want and then the students will then put together an entire event playbook, do a real presentation to real clients. And then in the third course, many of those event pitches are actually picked up and they plan and implement those events for the community. Um, And so they do have real world experiences. They stair step up this program. Um, And so there's, you know, a chapter or pieces of a chapter in the first class on risk management. But in 320 and 321, they're doing it live. They have to because it's a real event. Um, So, yes, but it would be really ideally nice if we could have a whole course on on risk management. Um, That's really what's... If we could do a full event program, that would be amazing, and then we could have courses dedicated to each of these things versus just units in the semester. Yeah, that's one of the things that we focus a lot on Mm -hmm. in our internship and hardcore with our full-time staff because, I mean... For example, TJ wanted to talk about, get your perspective on the Travis Scott concert, but that's... I actually was barely listening to that on the radio this morning as I popped in. I heard about all of the injuries and everything. Mm. I'm like, oh, I would love to hear about what, more so what happened, but... Well, she's probably the guru it. on it, but we'll that's that's one of the... That's one of the things we focus on, and Michael, part he's our facilities manager. Mm-hmm. He, that's, he went to venue management school, the safety and security school, so mm-hmm. he's... Very much that's at the forefront. And it's really hard um, with clients, I feel like, when you try to put those things into conversation because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so then it becomes kind of this... Debbie Downer thing. Yeah, and it's like an unwelcome tension argument that you don't really want to have, but you have to still fight for that safety because... You do have to advocate for that. And and we do... um, That's actually one of the issues that we have with the students is they don't want to talk about it because that's not the fun light exciting piece yeah. of events it's it's the necessary dry mm-hmm. content that you have to do and it's like pulling teeth to get them to understand how important it is and how in depth it is i want to think about everything from walking over cords yeah. to yeah, yeah. yeah mean, we break anything. all kinds of rules in here <laughs> i would never point out such things <laughs> We've talked we about do every time things. we come in here yeah we do we're like where's the rug where's the tape no it's fine we're good it's just us Exactly. We're assuming that own risk being here. <laughs> Workman's comp, right? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but that's nice to hear that you guys are making that such a huge piece of your um, internship, or even if it's just for um, if students volunteer at your events, but they're not quite your intern, they need to see the real world piece of it. Because mm-hmm. we can say it, you know, until we're blue in the face in the classroom, but until they see it in the real world, that is when it clicks in their head. That is when you get that transformative learning. Yeah. And I feel like especially like with this, the Travis Scott Astroworld incident, I mean, it's it should be talked about more. Yes. Just because, I mean, well, that people whole died, situ- Yes, and that whole situation could have been 100% prevented. Well, yes, and like I keep what saying. Happened? Yeah, she so, did, yeah, go ahead. Give okay, me some more sorry. context. Okay, so. <clears throat> as you can tell, I was short, a calvertator this week. That's fine. <laughs> I was traveling. Um, <laughs> in, and just a brief explanation of it was they basically had general admittance, mm-hmm. um, or general admission, and there was no, <laughs> there was no set seating, right? Okay. Um, the barricades on it weren't done in concert style. It was basically just the metal barricades around the stage. Oh. And then they. They were sold it to. Yes, they over they yeah, over capacity on general admission. Definitely. Um. And the way that they scheduled, the stage performances mm-hmm. usually there's an overlap, and there might be a ten or fifteen minute overlap, so you don't get everybody in one area at the same time. Right. Um, but they were giving, like, 15, 20-minute breaks to get people to move. Okay. Um, and there was a countdown clock. Yeah, that was the worst thing. There was a countdown clock. So you have people rushing when they get close to yeah. the... Yes. No. 
And so basically that's what happened is everybody rushed the stage, the people that were already there. I mean, mass movement towards the front of the stage. People started falling. Being trampled. People mm-hmm. got trampled. Um, and the barricades probably fell over because they weren't the correct kind. Yes. And hmm. um, Travis Scott never stopped. Oh. Where there were people that were like trying to notify him, like, hey, stop. Like, he just kept. Kept going. Yeah. And it was like. Choices were made. Choices were made. Mm. Um, so people died. Yeah. Um, now there's a huge investigation into it. I heard about the, the radio was talking about how yeah. he's, you know, there's a lot of charges being pulled mm-hmm. up. Yes. Um, um, and then who, like, you know, who did the family sue at that point? Right. Do you sue Travis Scott? Do you sue the event planners? Do you sue Energy? Because I keep going back to a couple of weeks before the Travis Scott, mm-hmm. there was Playboy and Cardi B, and the same thing happened. And they canceled oh. the concert. Mm-hmm. Once they started rushing, it basically turned into a riot. Right. So they shut it down. Mm-hmm. Everybody moved out into the parking lot. Like, Where was that at? In Houston, at Energy Stadium. Oh, wow. Yeah, so and that's is... why I'm like, it, it, from that mm. instance, this this concert should have been reevaluated for what Absolutely. they were doing. And that's where I keep falling back because my nephew was at the first one. And so oh. when my sister started hearing it on the news, mm-hmm. she was panicking. Right. Um, trying to get a hold of him. And he was like, no, we're in the parking lot. Like, we're leaving. Mm-hmm. We're good. We're fine. Um. Yeah. Well, see, the problem I have is, it, like you said, who takes responsibility and who right. from Energy Stadium, like who from that organization is who involved Who signed in off this? on this? Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, it could have been... Because you have to, because I mean, accidents happen, to come however. And be like, oh, green tag, like, you're good. Mm-hmm. Like, but did they really? No, but they should have. Yeah. I mean, we've even had, this is years ago, so this isn't anything recent, but... When we used to do Fourth of July out here, mm-hmm. so like ten, maybe fifteen years ago, when we did one of them, they came out and inspected the stage the symphony sits on, mm-hmm. and it was nowhere up to code. Mm. So how EHS or anyone ever signed off on it, I right. don't understand. It um, should never have occurred. No, it's just people don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. Quickly do it, leave. It's close to five, going home. Like they don't want to take, but then you know it becomes a huge liability and. Now look where you are. Right, and then it was signed off on, so yes. somebody said, well, I did my part. <laughs> yeah. So there's nine people that died. One of them, the most recent one that passed away, is an Aggie student. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. She was in the hospital, I don't remember how many days before she ended up passing. I think it was a week. Yeah, something like that. Wow. And then 300-something um, plus injured, something like that. Yeah. I mean, these are unfortunate scenarios, obviously. Right. But these are case studies that need to be brought into the classroom. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I even. And I'm is, sure they are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure it's a really part great. Of, they, yes. They and I'm sure it's the, conversation. You know, um, current events into the classroom. But. Yeah. And you have to because things mm-hmm. are changing constantly. And especially, yes. I mean, it's a perfect storm. You have a live concert, general admission, probably relatively affordable. People have been cooped up because of COVID, of course. Right. Of course there's going to be a ton of people. Well, right. But am I, the one thing I wondered is this is his fourth time doing it. He canceled the one during COVID. So I'm, I'm curious what the the plans looked like Did they resell? for the last three. I wonder if, the, you know, um, is, is yeah. it one of those things that they had? Because, you know, we had um, Broadway tickets for my 30th birthday back in 2020. We were going to go to New York City to go to a Broadway show for a weekend. Of course, I got shut down. And so, you know, they were like, okay, well, we'll just move it. That was in April. And so they were like, we will just... Um, Free of charge. We'll move you. Mm-hmm. We can, you can either um, refund your tickets or um, we will move you up to a better seat closer if you keep your ticket until November. So we're like, oh, sure, upgrade, because COVID will be over in November. It'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> so, when, the, you know, November came and went, and it was like, okay, we're just going to refund everybody. And so when, it, when Broadway opened back up, they allowed us to have early access to the tickets. Mm-hmm. I would do, you know, and we, we booked for February of 22, but I, I do wonder how... Other concerts yeah. and events are do are they? Oh, if you have a ticket, then you can come in. Right, exactly. So are they doing? There's a, there's a fine line of not wanting to argue with people versus overselling versus underselling and and yeah. That's so sad. Oversell and then hope like oh well this many percentage is going to be no show. Right. Yeah. It's super yeah. concerning how they've done all that just to get the industry back up and running. But mm-hmm. I just wonder what his contingency plan looked like from the last three years up leading up to this year. I'd be curious. Terrible. Well, I mean, you don't know. Maybe they had a different person at the mm. time that did it the few years before that. that would be I don't know. Yeah. I don't think that's an ideal place anyway to have a concert, but 
I guess if it's an outdoor festival type thing. I don't know. Yeah. Outside of Astral, they used to do Warped Tour. Yeah. Mm. And it was always fine. <laughs> <laughs> Age myself. Yeah. Sit back and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The 2000s. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so I got us all over the place. Yes. So That's normal. Yeah, it is. I think it's a more natural conversation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so you've <laughs> mentioned COVID it. a couple of times. <laughs> so I know you said you don't know a whole lot, but... Is there any discussions as to what they are teaching them about the COVID protocols moving forward with events, like things to consider, maybe even though we're kind of reverting, not really reverting back, but going back to somewhat level Well, there's a version of hybrid. It's it's never going to really go away. I think, I mean, you can see that in, in, at least not for the next few years, almost everything's being provided hybrid. You can either show up or you can attend on Zoom. Um, And so we're seeing a lot of that. I mean, I'm attending events via Zoom more so just because of the season that it is in my job, pre-registration. I am, it's hard to leave my office. And so if I'm not going straight to my lovely fun place for the day, (laughs) I'm not going to leave my office and come back because I have too much to do. Um, And so we're seeing the difficulties that people are running into with learning how to simultaneously provide a live face-to-face event while also having an experience for those who are piping in through Zoom. Um, And so that's definitely being talked about in the classroom. And um, we're actually requiring our students as a part of their required volunteer hours, they now have to volunteer for a virtual event. Good. And we are, um, we had to have a conversation with some students this semester who thought that virtual event meant that the planning was virtual, but the event was face to face. And we're like, no, just because your team meetings were on Zoom or on the phone or on Discord or, right. And they I was like, try mm, everything. Mm. It cracks me up. Let's let's <laughs> let's not let's very think about this way. I didn't explain <laughs> this. I'm taking this very literally. Yeah. So you know, okay, we're saying day of must be virtual um and so because that's never going to go away it right. really isn't uh-huh. and even if we go back to the majority of events being face to face some sort of virtual event will always occur at this point mm-hmm. and so they have to understand that that's not going away and get some experience in it um there are some of them are struggling to find it right now because i think so many people are pushing forward with getting straight back in to face to face that they're it's i think it's harder for students to they believe it is harder to find those things. The research there has to be. You just have to look a little harder. You'll yeah. find it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bush School does virtual events all the time. Yeah, they just look on our website. Yeah. Oh, can we talk about where we yeah. can find those those volunteer hours so my students can? Uh, I'm just gonna <laughs> go yeah, look on their the website, institutes. perhaps. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think. Well, Holly. Holly. Yeah, send her to Holly. We'll give you Holly's information. She handles. Thank you, all my that. students. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they do. They really do. And I was like. Okay, so we got to plan ahead because um, our um, upper level event management courses, they were doing one virtual event a semester, but now um, the clients are not really wanting that, and so they haven't had an opportunity to plan it themselves. But they are talking about how you have to bring in this opportunity of um, either a hybrid event or a fully online event, but also they're just now all having to plan a um, backup. If the, you're going to plan it for face to face, but should something happen, what is your plan to put it completely online? And so you have to be planning both versions. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. You guys well know. (laughs) Yeah, I sat on a committee this past spring, summer, spring, planning a virtual event, and that was an experience. I mean, the planning itself, when you're not in in – you can get a lot done when you're sitting next to each other versus, hold on, my mic is muted, or whatever, and I have to get up and move and – or through email, or through it's email. just, it's not ideal, and it just, you know, it's like typical class project. There's always some that do more than others. But it's so much easier now, st- in aging ourselves, it's so much easier now that students have Google Docs. They can work on a document simultaneously, yes. and it'll be fine. Yes. Versus when we did not have that opportunity. No, no. I think they had an email till college. <laughs> That's how old I am. I had the printer that had the ribbon, and it made all the noise. Oh, I wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, I, I was totally I I there. Those, okay. But. I am also not her age. <laughs> you are not uh, that we'll much younger. We'll just be on this side of the yeah, table. My grandmother <laughs> oh, had wow. a typewriter. You just, you just put my... her in that category. Well, no, my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> my... I mean, we all oh, heard it, right? Man. So my grandmother had an electric typewriter. So instead of being right able now. to use a computer, <laughs> instead of being able to use a computer to like type yeah. reports and mm-hmm. essays and things like that, we had to do it on a typewriter. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I definitely, yeah. So you know, we I had our the... home computer with our floppy disks. I had a Looney Tunes yeah. floppy disk, and I was very excited about it. Yes. And then I thought about the fact that our students nowadays have no idea what the save icon is. 
somebody asked if it was a jukebox. First of all, how did they know what that was? But also, <laughs> hmm, no, they're on floppy TikTok. Disc. Someone probably made a joke about it. <laughs> That's probably uh, true. <laughs> I think the Dixie Chicken probably still has a jukebox. That's true. That's true. I, I mean, it's, I think it's probably one of those fancy ones, like that you can electronic stuff. ones, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Not yeah, quite the same. The giant screen on but the wall, digital marketing <laughs> to those folks in the audience who keep pushing for it. Okay. You don't want running, you know, live tweets running behind you. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, we're almost we, there. We, yeah, we're almost maybe. There. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Great. People are not on Twitter anymore. It's fine. I know. Our peanut gallery is whispering. I know. They've been whispering. <laughs> so as far as COVID goes, one thing I think that we've at least talked quite a bit about is how we've, I wouldn't say forced, but we're still asking caterers to yes. follow that you know same guideline. And then yes. moving forward, there will still be that level because, I mean, it, you have to think about it. A lot of this started just because people have terrible hygiene practices. Right. I mean, things that we have always done and yeah. never thought twice about, mm-hmm. we're all going, oh, well, that was gross. I'd never really put that together. Yeah. I mean, things just as simple as, I was at Disney World, in case you guys didn't know, for the 50th. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing all these games where you're, you know, you're, you're shooting out Buzz Lightyear or whatever, not probably at him, with him. Um, so you're touching these things, and then you used to just get out and go eat your popcorn yeah. or whatever. And now when you go to every ride, there's hand sanitizer stations everywhere. And we're like, huh, how long was I doing really gross things? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, but then also, eating. like... How much did your immune system thank you? There, even yes. if you got sick. I think like, there is a very lovely fine line with that, and I yeah. definitely support my immune system. I do that 10-second rule, and just, yeah. I probably shouldn't, but I do. So I think about uh, that for, like, I did that for my child people. this weekend. Dropped a chicken nugget on the floor. He's like, Mom, it's dirty. I said, like, just put it in your mouth. You're fine. And it was there for, like, two seconds. It'll be fine. Yeah, that's basically what I did. There's no dog. Well, yeah, I'm going to blow some more germs on it and then give it to you. Well, like, you know, he was they, in my body at one they, point, and he's fine. They cancel each other out. <laughs> But yes, I, I agree. I mean, the things like, you know, people serving themselves versus other people yes. yeah. or, you know. You, wearing the masks when wearing, you're preparing food. Yes, that's a wonderful one. Yes, for sure. And, and gloves and or hand washed hands or just as simple as please don't reuse your plate. There's a new plate. I promise you. Do Which, not bring. Buffet lines at restaurants have been doing that forever. Right. Put it at an event, though. No. no. That's, too many, that's too many dishes to wash. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing that. That's more budget. More well, the one thing I will say that we forced quite a bit even before COVID was mm-hmm. there was linen. besides linen, yeah, there was a lot of times <laughs> that they would be setting tables and mm-hmm. you know bare hands on right. silverware, and I'm like, oh no, right. go put some gloves on. Yes, yeah, so when you have a stack of forks and you're pulling them out by the tongs oh and putting God. them on the thing, I'm just like. <laughs> Can we revisit what just, yes. just occurred here? <laughs> I've definitely made them go back to the kitchen and put it away and get something else. And I'm just like, You're this gross. is why we have our students going to, to real things with yeah. with you professionals. Because they have to see the little things that you don't really pay attention to matter. Whenever we set up for big banquets, if you just want to send them over. <laughs> oh, please. No. They, okay. So pre-COVID, soon to be post-COVID, after um, December, I think is the last time we... Let me start over. <laughs> Our event certificate requires coursework and non-coursework requirements. Pre-COVID, they have to do 40 volunteer hours in events and event management from the point of acceptance into the program until graduation. Um, and they have to do 10 different events. They could do 10 concerts, but they cannot do one week in event and get most of their hours done or all their hours. So they do have to work 10 events, three hours apiece. So um, you can learn more. Nobody can learn that much with a one-hour shift somewhere and leave. Right. That's fair. Um, and so they do. They did have to do a lot of experience that way. With COVID, event industry shut down. We did not want our students who were graduating at the time to be hindered by that. Um, and so it turned into less hours. It was turned into using the, <clears throat> the events that we had to plan within the classes. Those will count for it. If you happen to have any event experience outside of the classroom, you know, we'll take it. And then once we were, that was that first semester where we were transitioning very quickly. Then once we were able to plan, we then required the one online event, virtual event, because we could put it in the classroom to require them to do it. Um, and then as we go on, it's, it's um, we're getting back, we're each semester we're inching back closer to that 40. So I think this semester at 27, and then, um, was it December? So though in May will be the last time, and I think they have to get to, I think 30, and then starting in August. Hopefully, we're back to the normal 40, and so they will absolutely need volunteer opportunities. Anything and everything that you guys need, all we need 
is a little write-up about what they're doing, who they can contact, and we forward it out to our listserv, and they are well, that's, constantly I mean, that's, looking for Yeah, and that's part trainings. of the internship program. I think the interns, when they come from y'all's department, I think they hit 40 hours within, like, the first Yes, well, two. the internship program, yeah. um, the for the degree recreation, park, and tourism, those students have a six-credit internship, 400 hours worth of work. Yeah, that's so right. That is the one that absolutely is required. The event certificate, we encourage it as the elective option to do an event um, internship. Some of them do, especially our non-majors. Our majors are already doing it. Yeah. And so you very quickly can get 40 hours, which is why when we first implemented this, we had to put that stipulation of the number of events because they would go work a music concert, you know, festival over the weekend and be like, I'm done. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, that's wonderful experience, but... Go try something else. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. But were you actually learning anything? Right. Or were you just partying? <laughs> yes. And we, you know, we've had to do like, okay, you can take tickets, but don't take tickets at every single one of your events. Yeah. We want you to try different things to see different pieces of it. Yeah. Yeah, we try. We try. I mean, I know we had um, one intern who, she was doing the minor, mm-hmm. 3 L's department, and mm-hmm. she did her first actual internship over at the Bomber Stadium. Mm. That was the poor thing. <laughs> I thought she was going to give up on the events industry after that experience. And that's the other reason that they should be doing events with different volunteer yeah. and different, because you can see some people are <clears throat> more effective than others. Right. And so to see the different perspectives of that, you can realize that, okay, maybe you just don't like weddings or maybe you just don't like working for that specific venue, but you can go find your passions yeah. Yeah. elsewhere. Or you find like the type of event that you enjoy. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to do some sort of post-graduation survey of like, what they start because when they apply we have a list of event types what do you think you're interested in we need to do a post Mm -hmm. to figure out okay now that you've tried what do you actually want to get into that'd be interesting i would love to know the percentages of that right Hmm. Hmm. because we did another hat what (laughs) stop that what's the um there was an org- organization. Student Event Planners Association. Yes. So one of our former student employees <laughs> was the president? Yes. One Probably. of our fr- Yeah. So she wasn't actually in our internship. She was just one of our student employees. Mm-hmm. And so she held one of her meetings here with all of them. I think there was like 50 of them. Yeah. It's a pretty popular group. We gave them a tour and we mm-hmm. asked them, just a show of hands. There was also, first of all, there's only one guy in the audience. That was really funny. Yes. Um, how many of you are interested in doing this long term that are not wanting to go the wedding industry route? Mm-hmm. I think we had two hands. <clears throat> yes. So that's I was like. And, and we've we found that more so in uh, Student Event Planners Association that they were mainly weddings. And that was, I think part of that is because when that started closer when I was in college, um, the only thing that you did with that was go to the Brazos Valley wedding event and and that was the sponsor and the only speakers that came in were wedding related and so I was like I'm out you guys are wonderful but I don't want (laughs) to yeah we've already decided (laughs) the emotions and things that go with weddings and and I do love them I'll pick them apart in my head and attend it and have a blast but I don't that was not for me um anyway yes that's that's true um SIPA was very wedding oriented and so we're trying to under get them to understand that that's not the only industry. I know we're in Texas, and I know we're in the Brazos Valley, and weddings are huge. However, there's more out there. Yeah. Um, and we're also trying to get more men in our group. Um, we have a lot of um, women, and so we're trying to stretch to all the others. Yeah, we try. You know, you can't always force it, and can't always get the males to apply, but we've mm-hmm. had some really good ones. Yeah. And it helped, you know, we, we um, pre-COVID, <laughs> it's going to be like, the word forever. Um, we had a um, advisory committee built of practitioners and academics in each of our emphasis areas, and so for the event one, we of course had you know almost half men on our on our our committee, and so we were trying to show students like yes, there are men yeah. in this industry, and so um, we just need to bring in more guest speakers that are of you know not female gender and show them that everybody could be happy here. Well, and I mean even in. If, even if you're planning weddings, I mean, there's so much else into it that could yes. appeal to the male perspective, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, not just within weddings, but just events in general. I mean, you have the AV side of it. You have the security side of it. You have the risk, risk management, management side. And, mm-hmm. and even if you enjoy doing the setups or speaking with clients, I mean, you don't have to. Way. You say that with such a tone. I know. I, like, <laughs> gesture towards setups. you. 
God, setup, we have know. grandma typewriter, yeah. and you like to do the setup. <laughs> they just don't like me because they all hate doing workshop setup. I do oh. hate workshop setup, and I'm like the only one that enjoys it. What do we not like about workshop setup? They angles. can't ever get this shit right. Oh. Angles. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> angles. The the angles have never been my strong point. Math mm. is not a strong point. <laughs> Remember my internship. I did my internship with um, Fort Hood, Texas, with Morale Welfare and Recreation. So I did. Um, I worked a little bit in their leisure travel services, which is their travel agent side. I did a few weeks in marketing, and then I did the rest of the summer all in events. And so I remember taking out the, you know, the stick that had the wheel on it that will count the measure, so we can do the chairs just right to make sure they're enough because you have high ranking. I don't want to use this. Oh, this why? is not a touchy subject <laughs> at all. I can tell. <laughs> But why? Tell me why. Because if we have to change anything at the last minute, we have to be able to eyeball it. That's true. <laughs> so I trained them the hard way, mm-hmm. and then she bought everyone measuring tapes later. But I did not purchase them. Whatever. You found them. You Santa. Negotiated okay. It. Santa. No, no, no. The measuring tapes came from two of our student workers not knowing if what the difference. What the policy was? No. What the difference between oh, a yeah. six by eighteen and a six so, by thirty was. I forgot because about this. An 18-inch wide table is also 30 centimeters. Hmm. They learned that the hard way. Wow. And yes. argued for how long? Uh, it was a while before they came and asked. Because we were like, man, what's taking learning them so long? Moments? Learning so, moments? Safe now, places now, to have a learning moment? Now, granted, I will give it to them. We had just come back from like oh, no, no, no. a long... No. Just they long both start with the six. The length of the table. If yes. you set them next to each other, that should be common but sense. But they didn't know. I really bowling. worry about our students sometimes. But they I'm didn't bowling. know if like maybe there was, there was confusion. Six by 18, six by 30. If 18 inches is also almost like 30 centimeters, I mean, I could see where it... <laughs> Except for when you write it. You write six foot by... No. 18. You no, don't you wrote the... 6x30. Ugh. I did? No, that's how it's written. <laughs> no, 6x30. I was like... 6x30. Even on the rare occasion that you do an event folder, you do not put 6 foot x 30 inches. You are correct, because I assume that when they're trained, they're explained They this. were, and they had already both worked here for a little while. This is not, like, they were yes. not new. They were not new. But I did, I... They're I mean, literal, though. They're so literal. They're it's crazy. Literal. Yes, there is reason to... Um, Put it as obvious as possible so that there is no room for... Yes, so it is a very sore (laughs) subject. They took their (laughs) event folder and they measured because they knew that's an 8 by 10 piece of paper. 8 and a half by 11? Yeah, whatever. (laughs) You don't (laughs) know. When you choose it on the printer option, And you're training our students. I know where the breakdown is <laughs> now. <laughs> Are you going to buy her some tape measures with a <laughs> wheel? Golly. No. But I have a tape measure. I need her to eye yes. polish. She's got to learn. I know that this is a podcast, but I mean, that's... So she bought those. Event person. This one yes. is mine because my husband bought it for me. Yes. So she <laughs> got one for everyone. Oh, mine is hanging yes. on the outside of my door because I don't use it. I think the other thing that you have in any scenario them. if you're an event person... Excuse my French. Is you have an oh shit kit? Yeah, yeah. I have one with me at all times. Yes, I still carry one. <laughs> I mean, and it's a little bit bigger if you're doing, a, you know, going to a wedding. Even if it's if I'm a guest, I am bringing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my you'll kit. be the hero. You will save the day. Well, I have been a bridesmaid in a Catholic wedding in which my <laughs> bridesmaid's dress busted down the back right before going down the aisle. So I was like, <gasps> husband. Grab the kit. We're just doing X's of safety pins and like trying to pull my hair back as long as I can. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you carry those things like uh-huh. your tape measure on your lanyard. Yeah. She's not eyeballing you at all. <laughs> they have to learn to be able to do it on the fly. Yes. It will save and them they in so do. many occasions. My yes. issue with the workshop is the angles though. Because there's Regarding. always like the fourth table from the front mm-hmm. that is just off like the tiniest little bit. And then it ruins the rest of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can see that in just small classrooms where you have, they're, they're shoving so many tables in yes. at the front table, you're doing this at the screen. And I'm like, that is not an experience that anybody wants. No. <laughs> I don't even go to the movie theater and sit in the front row. I don't want that. I don't even know why they sell that. Though. I don't either. It should not be. <laughs> Who wants to do that? Experience design. Yeah. Experience design. Yeah. Everything comes down to experience design. I mean, they teach you. So I got um, my CMP, mm-hmm. and they teach you, like, that first row has to be so far back from right. the screen. Right. And the movie theaters don't do that. No. <laughs> Some they people need event like planners it. to run the world. <laughs> right? We run the world. 
That's my the theme song. There's a song. Yeah, I know. Song. I know. Mm. I only know it because of Pitch Perfect. Yep. Two, three. Same. I can't remember which one. Yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> two. Two. <laughs> only know it because of Pitch Perfect. Yes, I love those movies. My husband and I are They are fantastic are movies. Favorite, yeah. But I don't yes. listen to Beyonce, so. Yeah. I do. I know you do. You listen to everything. I listen to everything. Yeah. Everything is the best. So have we got through Peanut all of our gallery. questions? No. <laughs> what's the last one? The last one is, if someone was interested in going into this industry, what's the one piece of advice you would give I them? I mean, obviously you give your students advice, but if you, mm. random person. A random person who is interested in this event, industry? Um, ooh, I don't think I have a just one. I mean, do you like details? <laughs> Are you good at details? You can like details and be bad at details. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The next one is, are you okay with your free time being not anybody else's free time? Mm-hmm. Like when everybody else gets to have fun on the weekends or the evenings, you're on, you're on the clock and everybody is not, everybody else is not. Um, and then I would just say, just go try it. Just go, go try it. You can do that anywhere. Everybody has events in town mm-hmm. and they all need help. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So yeah, try it out. And if not, you helped your community. <laughs> good job you learned a good lesson you yeah. don't like it yeah yes i think people think it's just it's such a sexy you know glamorous who thinks that <laughs> i mean <the> television <laughs> makes event pl- come on how many oh, channels do we have wedding planner. Yeah. there's that i mean there's uh, how many hallmark movies oh i don't know how many yeah how many hallmark oh, movies are there? oh we have <laughs> 300 some- 400 that you've watched now and I'm sure 258 of them are all like event planners of some sort in this beautiful Vermont town. And and it's the easiest job in the world, right? So. Oh my God, I hate Hallmark <laughs> so I, much. You, I totally watched a TikTok where this lady goes to Vermont and she's like, okay, I'm standing here in Vermont with my hot chocolate with this beautiful scenery. Where is the single man that is supposed to save yeah. me? Yes, yes. And then there's something with a bakery and, and then a Christmas event, even though it's really Thanksgiving. Yes. You're just getting flashbacks because you know eight <laughs> movies off the top of your head. She probably watched one yesterday when she was falling asleep. Or this morning she watched a clip of one. Who knows? Like, Hallmark is so bad in so many ways. But you know what? I mean, I don't think there should no be no such thing as guilty pleasure because you should never feel guilty about your pleasures. But there's so much fun to watch. The mindless, happy-go-lucky television. But that's I tried what people one. watch. And then yeah. they go, oh, I could do this. Or they watch, what is the show, again, Dating Us, um, Sweet 16 on MTV. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> I like how easy it is <laughs> to do all Dad, these Dad, you didn't give me the car I asked for. I don't want this. Like, I need an ice sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I watched Saw this weekend and I was like, anymore. oh, I could do that. Oh, God, I hope no one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't waste. know. I don't even know why ice sculptures were a thing. <laughs> um, I don't know. Have you ever seen Reverend Butter? He's really awesome. Hmm. Don't get me wrong. Like, they're awesome. They're gorgeous. But at weddings. Logistic no. nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me tell you about Reverend Butter if you don't know who that is. He's from Houston. Um, <laughs> he carves ice sculptures with a chainsaw. And it is really awesome. I think a lot of people that's do that. That's yeah, mostly yeah. what they he, do. But he does it at, like, concerts and rock oh, shows. Oh, okay, so he does, he does it live. It, he does it live. That's very cool. Um, and it's awesome. I think there is definitely a time and place for that. For sure. Like a, yeah. He used to travel around with, like, Vermont event band. on Hallmark. <laughs> Taking yeah. shots out of the freaking ice sculpture. I've only seen that at bachelorette parties. Well, not that kind of sculpture. And it's not that kind of podcast, fool. You went there. You said it. I just Good said thing what everyone this is was. Not live. I just said what everyone was thinking. It can be edited, and it won't be. It won't. Be. <laughs> yeah. The real side of event management. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of a lot of learning. I mean, there's part of my internship where we were so we worked because Fort Hood is Fort Hood, largest military base in the free world. Ha- used to have very big budget for event management, and I'm sure they still have a really good one. But we would bring huge people. I mean, P. Diddy would come, and WWE would come, and we had all these huge... Um, but some of them, not, nobody I mentioned, hired huge divas. And having to be an intern when you are, you know, what was I, like 20, some 20 years old, and you're told... Go figure out why they're late, get them back in line with their, you know, meet and greets, and then get them on the stage. You have 10 minutes, they're 20 minutes late. Figure it out. Oh, okay. Let's make this happen. You you, you get confident real quick because that's your mm-hmm. only choice. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I would say that's one advice I would give is learn how to be assertive. And, you have to learn and, to be assertive yeah. and confident in your choices yeah. for sure. Yeah. We make them all take a class, even our students who don't want to do this the rest of their life. What class? The – do you not – oh, you don't do it anymore. But we teach them all um, – Jamie was doing some online LinkedIn stuff with oh. assertiveness. And oh, we're, like the oh, yes. LinkedIn? Yes, yes, yes. yes. They yes. still do those. I was like – just like that. No, class. not actual teaching? class. Okay. No, like yes. what we do for our professional development for the students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like assertiveness mm-hmm. is one of them. And we, we put them in situations that they have to learn how to do that. Right. So – um, Learning how to have conversations. What else is there? What else professional development do you guys have them do? Uh, I love that idea. Customer service mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is a big one. We have we actually have a great customer service manual that Sarah made a video for. Um, Ooh, videos, I still have yes. to finish all that. That's the you know meeting students <laughs> know. where they are. I mean now yeah. students now are very different from students ten years ago when mm-hmm. I started, mm-hmm. and they're not going to read anything. And so you have to provide present it. There's a happy middle there. You want to present it in a way that they're, you know, they're going to take it in. But also you have to get them to understand that at least for the next 10 years or so, probably maybe less, once they hit the real world, the workforce, they have to read emails because that's how business is done. And you have to read things because that is how business is done. Um, my favorite first test of the event management certificate is um, we used to have them. Now it's electronic. You have to sign a contract that you are signing off that you understand you have to do 40 events, 10 different events, three hours a piece, no customer or community service, no family friend events, no, you know, sister's weddings, blah, blah, blah. Sign it, date it. And they would sign it without yeah. reading it because they would have to initial. Or they'd check it off. And I said, did you even read that? It said you must initial. You just signed a contract without reading it. Mm-hmm. And then I had one student a couple years ago who printed her name. I said, you need to sign your name. She said, I, I don't know cursive. They never taught it mm-hmm. in school. I said, what does your driver's license say? I was like, show me your driver's license. It's printed. And she's like, I even got pulled over once, and, and the cop had a certain talking with me about how you should never have a signature that's printed because anybody can print it. Right. Like, if, oh, if DPS let things, them do it, then DPS let them do it. Jesus. Are we back around to people signing off on things? Yes, of- <laughs> yes we do. Customer service, assertiveness, um, how to write emails. Yeah. That was my big – so when um. we first started doing our internship, that was my biggest frustration was that they didn't know how to write a professional email. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and so that was one of the things that I've asked them. Even Like I said, with even with our students that don't want to do this for a living. Right. It's just, They're taking the re- yeah. required course or the required We're just – do this. Make sure you understand what you're doing. Make sure you proofread it. If you need someone to read it before you send it, that's fine. Let us do that. Check your, you know, grammar. Our, our marketing intern, I mm-hmm. love her to pieces, but she's grammatically challenged. Um, My mother has a philosophy. Um, she is the event coordinator at the Center for Teaching Excellence on main campus. Um, and so her big thing with her interns, check, check, recheck. Mm-hmm. And so they get, they graduate and they're across the stage, check, check, recheck. <laughs> like, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's a huge thing. Yeah. It's, I mean, and just, I mean, you have them choose something they want to do, right? That's part of what you guys were doing for a while was mm-hmm. asking them what's one thing they, what goal they want to have for each month. Like this, yeah. something that's not so they necessarily have to do work one thing related. Month. Well, like a certain goal to have, like a professional development goal that we could expand on that they were already doing. I love that. Um, I mean, that's how we got Caleb as an AV intern. Yeah. Because he wanted to learn, he was a student worker. He wanted to learn more about AV. He was... That's great. Relatively proficient in it, and then Michael took over. I was gonna say, so do you guys? Position. It's a mix of of um, uh, going like doing a LinkedIn class versus like, you guys physically teaching them mm-hmm. how to do things. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. We do a lot of hands on stuff. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, be. that's where you're getting that networking opportunity, but also mm-hmm. just that that mentorship is very yeah. important. We try. We try. I mean, sometimes you know you get the student workers that are like I'm just here, like I'm here to right. work. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but like, you're still gonna have to talk to us. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. we still For want you to learn sorry. something while you're here. Yeah. Yes. And even if it's just how to be more professional in the workplace, I think we can we all send them to like Jamie. That's a we send thing them to do. Jamie. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> um, you know, if. We need if they need to expand on their negotiations, oh, yeah. we send them to Jamie. Jamie's really good at because negotiating yes. things. That is, she's she's yes. the top notch one. Like I go to her to mm-hmm. listen when she's in her negotiating world. Okay, so I'm hearing uh, guest speaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She would actually be really. Yeah, I. She used to work Hilton, their call center, right? Yeah. So Ooh, she had to. You got down. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. She's gotten us got a it. lot of 
free things. Not like I'm going to go out to try to get this for free. It's that was damaged. What are you going to do about it? Right. Yeah. Recovery. Yeah. yeah. It's a big piece. She's, yeah. she's great at it. Mm-hmm. Even negotiating with Sudden Link most times. Wow. You're a queen <laughs> if you can do that. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. Whew. She's gotten my bill down a couple of times. I haven't done it in a while. I know because you have to do it before every November. Because they hike every November. Yeah. And I had a whole conversation with them before I cut ties. Was was uh, like, okay, you're raising again. What what is changing for me? What is getting a better quality? What is what am I still getting for this higher price? Nothing. Okay. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, now we have fiber optic in our... Sorry, we're like tree branching. We are. We tree branch. We have. Okay, I'm like... <laughs> but negotiating, that's that's not really yes. that tree branching. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, she's great with that. Negotiation is something that very much needs to be taught. And yes. some, again, it's one of those things that it's, it's not a sexy thing to learn. And yeah. so students don't necessarily think about it or want to learn it, but it's a requirement. You really have to. Yeah know how to do that and some of them are naturally than others are you know yeah. we're natural I am not natural at it at all but I will do it if I have to and then a lot of that comes down to like their assertiveness if they're willing to at least fight for what is necessary right so and that comes down to being confident in your mm-hmm. choices and what you mm-hmm. know is the right thing to do yep yeah and then that fine line of what your client still wants <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah then we just talk about it later about how we were like, yeah, we were right. They didn't listen, but it's cool. <laughs> so do you have any questions for us? Yes. We're just going to. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, get... <laughs> I mean, I have been asking questions, but then, but really it's, are you guys looking for an intern coming up for next semester or next summer? Do you guys, um, next or... summer. Okay. Yeah. So we do a full nine month program. Wonderful. Yeah. So we like to have them for a full year because mm-hmm. then. By the time you train them, they're not leaving. Number one. Yes. And two, once by the time they learn it, through. yeah, what, by the time they learn it, um, it takes almost a full year, even a full time. Right. Yeah. So I mean, we like them to learn it all. It makes sense. And also, I mean, that was one of the um, things I didn't like too much about my internship is a phenomenal internship. Obviously got to see a lot of things, do a lot of things, but it was a summer internship and that was it. And so there were events where I was doing like the leading up to this and then implementing it. And then there were some that I was just kicking off into the planning. Mm. I didn't get to see one fully all the way through. Yes, so we eventually that's... buy this. So we usually start in August. We start looking in May, end of May into the summer, and then we start them in August. And then by January, they're pretty much doing it takes so. about three months. And yeah. then they get to have their own. Yeah. And they do that's anywhere wonderful. from, depending on what they have going on, I would say anywhere from 10 to 15 events maybe. That's wonderful. Because they help support most of them. They learn all the AV. They learn the setups. Then they Mm -hmm. learn the event management, um, client relations, all the communication stuff that goes with it, eventually negotiation. Do they ever get to, I mean, again, mine was a summer, but, you know, I was shadowed and learned, and then towards the end of it, I I was in charge of it. Mm -hmm. So you have students who get to be the lead. Yeah. Right. After a time. After three months. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We start them, they immediately start off learning the setups and helping with whoever mm-hmm. they're with during that time, one of us. Um, they start helping plan, learn the software that we use our um, for all of our planning purposes, mm-hmm. our processes, and we explain to them very clearly, not everyone does it like this. Right. Everyone plans differently. We may have a core way of doing it, but even all of us do things differently. Right. Whereas I'm better on the fly doing stuff last minute. Some people like are better. Like changing chairs without tape measure. the day yes. before to plan anything. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, don't let our students hear that. <laughs> but I, it she took me, it took me years to do one. that. Yeah, she it, gives herself the easy one. <laughs> not all easy, but I you do. You also have years of experience to be able to do that. Yes. yes. I was not and that way has, in the beginning. No. I, that's why our processes are the way they are, because I used to be that way. Three months out, you do this. One month out, you do this. Two weeks before, mm-hmm. yes. That all was because I used to do all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also we have and total we, OCD And people. it's usually with the client that she's very familiar with. Yes. Well, the ones that I'm... <laughs> There are even some when I am me, like, very OCD. When I when I first started, I was like two months out contacting mm-hmm. clients, like yes. you know. And mm-hmm. now it's four weeks out, yeah. and then I know there's some clients where I'm like, well, they're not going to have any information yes. until the week of. So right, you learn you know. your your repeat clients for yeah. sure, and your repeat events. I mean, the clients that we don't work with, they've at the two month mark, they've already started emailing me. Yes, because either they're new, they've never done it before, mm-hmm. they want to make sure all their ducks in a row, and I'm like. Or exactly that last one, me, ducks in a row. I need to make sure that we are. Like, let me pencil you in for this. Okay, now I'm confirming that we still have it. Yeah. Like, are we good? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I have been to where they have not shown up before, and I'm like, hmm. 
You're like, oh. I have all of the things. You're like, oh, my time is not up. valuable? Thank you. Right. So I'm like, what are my people supposed to eat? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, and we help we help with that. That's one of the things that I really like to teach our, our student interns is the relationships between the vendors and the facility Very and nice. how to help at least alleviate some of that stress for the clients. Mm-hmm. And catering is a big one. Mm-hmm. Got it. They'll tell us stuff. I will be, they the may phone. come get me. I may have to make a call and we're trying to get things figured out so they don't have to. They can focus on what's happening on site. Right. So it's. That's important. Yeah, there's a lot. And I think from our perspective, just mm-hmm. the facility side in general is a lot different than the front of house planning. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done a, you know, a little bit of the front of house planning. I hated it. <laughs> I like being behind the scenes, not involved mm-hmm. in a whole lot as far as what's happening day of. Because all right. of our planning is leading up to the day of the event. And the day right. of event, for us, it's the least stressful day. Yeah. We just... it's, yes. But I mean, if you do your job right, right. it should be. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's... And it's very rewarding when you see, you know, a guest and they're just like, this was such a great event. It looked so easy. Yeah. You're like, you know what? That's a compliment. Yeah. Even though it was, it was not easy. But the fact that you did not notice anything that go wrong or notice how hard we worked to get there perfect that's yeah. the point mm-hmm. for yeah. sure yeah we definitely try to give them a well-rounded experience that's important yeah. so this podcast runs weekly monthly i would love to get our students this so it's, it's specifically events yes for the most part we've yeah. branched out into since we're part of the bush school we've started right. doing some stuff with them but we've tried to keep it mostly event related We've done Great. a couple where it's not been, which was yeah. with our dean and our associate dean, of course, which was hilarious. Them. But, um, yeah, we try. I mean, we're happy to have anyone on, mm-hmm. anyone that wants to talk about what's going on, challenges they may have. Um, mm-hmm. I would love to hear what a student, you know, yeah, an no, incoming I, student mm-hmm. into y'all's department and maybe one that's on the way out to see what the experiences have been like for them. Absolutely. I was just going to say, so for, first I want to advertise to our students to, like, <laughs> listen to this. This is yeah. awesome. Um, but also, and then, of course, you know, if, you know, send information to our instructor who's teaching the courses because she has amazing experience um, inside and outside the classroom. And then also for if you guys ever want to invite students or anything like that, that's we have a list here for our event students. So anytime you need volunteers, internships, anything like that, you guys just write it up, graphic, text, everything, and I forward it. Okay. Yeah, I think Jamie handles all of that stuff. I don't do the marketing. Anytime you have a graphic text, <laughs> yeah, whatever, yeah. I forward it. <laughs> yeah, we try. Um, I We did get one volunteer out of that meeting we had um, with the student organization, and she was great. She was really interested in what we were doing. That's good. Yeah. And we, um, you know, we do send the, the, we have the listserv, but our department also has a weekly newsletter, advising newsletter, um, and so that's something else we can pop in there. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Very much. Yeah. An next time episode. Next time on. <laughs> and they're like, we didn't push record. <laughs> Maybe. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I forget. Oh, okay, he's done. He's done. Before. Yes, he has done that before. So <laughs> I would have done that before. <laughs> oh, I don't know what eight is. We're still working with trying to get one of our vendors on here. Ah, yes. Yeah, she's right. super yes, busy. Yes. Um, but then if we don't, it's Christmas time. Holiday time. Excuse me. We're going to do our holiday episode. Is all that going to be an on-site one? All the trend. Oh, no. Maybe. <laughs> on-site where? Yeah, exactly. Are you talking about our holiday party? Yeah. No, gosh, uh, no. Chris Mahana Kwanzaa? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you forgot Yule, but okay. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah. yeah. So, next time, episode eight, something's going to happen. Yeah, it is. It will be holiday um, related. There will be an episode. Yes, there, there will be an episode, and it will be, be holiday-related, so yeah, <laughs> probably. Okay. We wake up. But thanks. Bye.